Hello everyone, welcome to the GameCraft GameCast on GamerAccess.com. I am joined by the ever-awesome Aaron Reynolds. Hey, hey, hey. And the ever, ugh, the ever broken but never beaten down, Ray Ray Glenn Johannesson III. This what's good, this what's that's good, good. Hey everybody. <laughs> this is... This is start gonna be. This is uh, how you start a strong episode. Uh, Give me a really good chew. This is gonna be a strong week, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, how has your week been? Oh, you know, things happen. Th- things have happened. People die. It's all <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> I was at a it's the concert. circle of life. I was no, at a concert uh, last night, and they played a ska version of "I Just Can't Wait to Be King." It oh, was great. Urban Legends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was the Maxis, Suburban Legends, and Real Big Fish. Yeah, that's a great so. show. Uh, saw them a few years ago, and yeah, they're great. Uh, yeah. Met the singer and all that, and then you get back home and uh, uh, find out that they're that, like they spend most of their time in Disneyland uh, as a band that just covers uh, '90s Disney songs, but ska. The best. That that sounds like literally the best career you could ever have as a ska musician. Right? Oh my god, I would give anything to just be that. Yeah, like just that. That sounds incredible. Oh. It's kind. It's kind of the best job I could possibly imagine. I can't imagine it pays well, but you're just like happy all the time when you're doing that. That, you, that and you have to like get perks. Like you got to be able to like go to Disneyland, right? Like for well, like right. big discounts or like hopefully free. Even I would have to uh, imagine like they have uh, housing nearby that they can afford, or is like dis- or they stay in a hotel I, room that's discounted I know by that Disneyland. Employees that like for for like. Disney employees, like there is employee housing. Okay, so then yeah, it would be like they would have probably have some housing somewhere in there, and then uh, they probably have free Disney tickets. But it's more like uh, just as a band, they spend <clears throat> you know a good amount of time at Disneyland, and then it's like, well, we need to make money as a band, so here's a new album, and we're going on tour, so we can't really go to Disneyland except for once or twice, and even then, that's like your workplace. I mean, after a while, even if you're like a ska band in a theme park, I would have to imagine after eight months of working and then it's like, Oh, for one day you want to go. It's like, sure. I mean, uh, the, fun, the rides are fun, but like, I know like, this popcorn like... person and they're depressed and Oh, here's okay. Yep. All right. Hi, Joel. Hey, Joel. I'll, I'll have an ice cream, man. <laughs> uh, Cause the ice cream, like last time I went to Disneyland, it was cheaper to buy ice cream than it was to buy bottled water. Hmm. All like, right. Like it was cheaper to buy an ice cream cone than it was to buy bottled water. I think that's fair. I think I can live in that world. Um, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, they have that's a absolutely fun show. I'm glad you went. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll say the Maxies are not a band I would like outside of a couple of songs would listen to outside of a uh, out of a concert. But th- they're, were they they're, local? Uh, they're from Greenland, dude. Oh, Jesus. Wait, okay. the Maxis are? Yeah. Fuck. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. then, uh... No. Man. The, the Maxis are from Greenland, and uh, they are a fantastic live show. Okay. Like, like they are an amazing live show. Um, they have a very adversarial relationship with the other bands they are on tour with and the audience. Um. Huh. Yeah. Like that. They're they're fan. They're they're hilarious though. I really enjoyed their stuff. Suburban Legends, super upbeat. Of course, I love their Disney covers. Uh, was surprised to find out that two of their band members are from Sparks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was odd. They're that was, from they're, where? From Sparks. Uh, Sparks. Like. Oh really? Yeah. My hometown. Yeah. That was um, a. Their their first drummer was uh, the drummer for Avenged Sevenfold until he died. Uh, okay, uh, so at Real Big Fish, uh, I liked how like yeah we're gonna play our big hit from the '90s and they trolled people by playing like 
like the beginning of like eight other songs first. Like <laughs> at first that stuff it was like obvious was like not them. Like they started with like a Nirvana song. Yep. Uh yep. and then by the end they started doing like a mighty boss tone song. And then it's just like, oh wait, that's that's like my cousin's band. Sorry. Um <laughs> But yeah, it was it was a really good show, really upbeat. They, they closed with "Take on Me," a ska version of it. Nice, yep, that's a yeah. good one. That's the way you do that show, man. The ska shows, there are just not enough ska bands anymore. I understand why, but man, they're some of the most fun that you'll have. It, ska, it, ska bands are fun. It's a real like contrast, like the like. The last two concerts I went to were, like, nerdcore and, like, metal. Yep. Or, like, hard rock. And, like, hard rock has this, like, very uh, aggressive atmosphere of, like, headbanging and whatnot. And nerdcore is just kind of, like, you sit and enjoy the music and kind of interact with the band a little bit. Versus, like, ska, it's, like, just super upbeat. Like, everyone's dancing or having a good time. Uh, You know, it's the closest thing we have to bringing swing back. (laughs) Uh, well it definitely has like a a a rock and roll kind of feel uh just in terms of like get up and and you know distorted guitars uh when they come in but uh there's just something so overwhelmingly happy about it it's it's definitely that that line between swing and and rock. rock there's just this mix here and it's so nice um yeah so uh that was a good show and then i got my new television Oh yes, nice. How is it? It fucking beautiful. Like it's so beautiful. Uh, so I, I a couple weeks ago I got my tax return and I ordered my new TV. It's a fifty-five inch uh, Sony. It's ten p set. Uh, and it came in the mail. And now I could have waited until Friday for like Ray to come over and help me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got home at eleven at night and I was like, no, no, I'm gonna set it up myself. Okay. And. Setting up a 55-inch TV by yourself, turns out that's kind of hard. Yeah. It's kind of a challenge. I so. What, Ray, your mic was quiet. I imagine that would be the case, considering I had to pick it up, assemble it, put it together, <laughs> refix it. I'm guessing you broke it six times in the process. Uh, no, I actually, so when I, when I screwed the stand together, I only, uh, actually ended up having to redo it once, and that's just because the screws weren't tight enough, because I had a screwdriver that was actually just slightly too big for the screws. Um, mm. other than that, though, it went well, it looks great, I've been playing a bunch of games on it recently, I've actually been te- attempted to hook my PC up to it, just to see how, uh, XCOM looks before it crashes. So, okay. Speaking of XCOM, I still need to try mine. Uh, is it still downloading? No, it finished downloading like last night at like 11 p.m. But and did did you install it? Yeah, it's installed. Everything's like I just haven't re- like opened it yet because I'm like if I start this game at midnight, oh god. You're going like it's one of those games where like you're gonna pl- like you're gonna play it and play it like it's it's one of those games that just makes my shift go by super quick when I bring it to work. Because I'll bring it to work on my laptop, and I will sit and play it, like, like after I make dinner for the for uh, the clients, um, I'm pretty much free until I give them their meds at 9. So, like, give them their dinner at 5.30, and, like, I'm playing XCOM, just like, and then I hear my alarm go off for med- meds, I'm like, holy crap, it's already time to give them meds? What the hell happened? I don't know, uh, like... Like, right now, like, you know all the games I have. Like, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 comes out in two days, and that's going to eat up my home life. Like, that's just going to be like, wow, Ray hit level 75 in six hours, in 60 hours. That's, that's Did how Did he ever I, stop? No. That was me with Titanfall, bro. I feel you. Like, and then there's, and then there's Fire Emblem. I, I just got that. I'm starting it tonight, and oh my god, my nights are gone. That, that's <clears> your, that's your work game, though. Um, yeah, that's not a work game. That's, that's enjoyment. <laughs> Like that's I love pleasure. those game series. Like that's pleasure. Uh, I think for me, uh, I like for me, uh, XCOM is a game that I think that you will end up really enjoying just because like you enjoy games like Fire Emblem, whereas I normally don't. Uh, I enjoy the for whatever reason I enjoy the futility of XCOM. Uh huh. 
Like, I put that shit on normal mode on Iron Man and just, like, I know I'm, ne like, I acknowledge, like, the, I'm never going to beat this game. Like, it's, n like, the chances of me ever finishing an XCOM game, like, game all the way through the story are impossible. So I just kind of treat it like a roguelike, uh, you know, like a rogue legacy. And you just want to see how far you'll get? I want to see how far I can get, how far I can keep my, like, close friends alive. Um, yeah. All right. Who did you start with that's still alive? Uh, so you you start out with a crew of four. My very first crew was uh, you don't get to name them or anything, and they made it through the first mission, and they all lived. And then the second mission, I changed them to uh, Tori, Steph, you, and John, and three of you died in like the third mission. Okay. And you got gravely wounded. You were the one who lived. Uh yeah. yeah, I saw the whole thing, boss. He, there was fire everywhere. I didn't know what was going on. Just all of a sudden, there was calm, and then the truck exploded. It was like, uh, oh, God. Oh, man, no. You you want to talk about, like, but no, the, the game is awesome. It's super fun. The problem is, because of its kind of glitchiness at times uh, and, and having other problems, like, it can be infuriating. Like, the game glitched, giving me its red screen bug, which, like, it doesn't really do anything besides, like, occasionally mess up stuff in the environment, and it will also, uh, like, freeze the game for a second. So, like, I get out of the red screen bug, and what it did with the environment, it caused this truck that my soldier was using as cover to explode, and they died. Jeez. And I was like, god damn it. Well, sorry, Stephanie. Um... <laughs> I'm uh, my bad. <laughs> uh, my bad guys. So, all right. Uh, I I really like that game, but the PC version, like, I you know, I asked her, like, I started asking around and listening to other podcasts to see if anyone was like having the same issues I was, because I fear it's like, well, I'm on a GPU that while it's not amazing, it's still pretty good, but like. What is someone with like a 770 or a 970 or a 980 having? And like two people with 980s got back to me. It was like, no, it's it still crashes a lot, and like I can run it on max, just but that's because I have a 980 and it's gonna brute force it to do so. That's basically where I'm at. Like you told me it crashes, and I'm just like, I'm gonna make you run pretty. Like yeah, your like, your game is gonna be fine. Like I had to bump it down to medium to get it to. You know, but like I, I had to get bump it down to medium to get it to run properly, and not have oh, issues. Oh no! I just want to point out something. Uh, like mm. last night, like I was playing like with settings and all that. Like I was playing Heroes and like I was downloading, I was downloading it and and other like files. And I was like, oh, I was just like, okay, like this is this is running super slow. Like halfway through the game, it just decided like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna crash out. And just so you're talking like, about heroes, right? Heroes yeah, like one. I'm talking okay. about heroes, and like I was just like, okay, I'll just lower the settings and fix that. And y yeah, you know, like how you lower it slightly to make kind of a difference, like just yeah. a little bit at a time. Like this time, I was like, like I'm downloading a lot of things right now, a lot of very big things. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna dip it down super super low. And oh my god, it was like playing original Zelda. Like there were block characters, they were made of pixels. <laughs> That's that's what I always hate about people like some PC gamers who are like you can play it on the lowest setting. No, you can't. No, like like you I was playing like <clears throat> as Zeratul and like he did his like cleave thing and he didn't move. Just like a circle formed around him, like a green little sphere. Like he had a health ring around him. Oh god! Uh... And like laming the wizard shot off her laser beam. And her laser beam was like a like one pixel line. I was just like, "What is this game?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing on I'm playing on lowest settings right now, and uh, I'm I'm getting most of it. But it's just like I don't know. I mean, you can play on the lowest setting. It's just it, certainly it's, not preferable. It's 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 like the I really really want to play this game on this computer. Yep. Like that. Like you have to just really want it. Um, and thankfully my video card is good enough to where it can run that game, no issues on Max. But, like, XCOM, XCOM, like, even on its, like, best settings, I was just like, this looks good, but it's not like, I don't get why this game runs like crap. 
unless right. you ha- unless you're on like at minimum a nine seventy. Like mm. I don't I don't get it, but uh yeah, XCOM continues to be an awesome game. Like I I I if you like strategy games, I say pick that shit up immediately. But just know that until they patch shit, it's going to be broken. Uh, mm. I, uh, didn't really make my much progress in Firewatch. Uh, I downloaded it for Ray. Did you play that at all? Firewatch? Yeah. I Did... made it to the first mission where you're like, go stop the skanks in the lake. And, and that's and where I ended. Did you steal their boombox or throw it into the lake? No, I was like... I was just straight up like, you know what, Bronx with the mean approach, so I'm going to go, like, when I get there, I'm going to go nice, and then I never got there. Like, I fell down, broke my spine, like, on that first bit, and I was like, well, he's dead, and turned it off. <laughs> but you get up from that. Like, it's, it, I know. you are supposed to it fall. Was, I know. It was pretty much just, like, I don't want to, like, this is a five-hour game, and I could probably beat it tonight, but I don't want to. <laughs> I've just been busy with other stuff. Like, I, I'm, pr- not sure like me, but I'm probably, I'm going to dive into it tonight. Uh, and the other stuff that I've been busy with has been Street Fighter. Street, Street Fighter. Street Fighter. I've heard some of that on the news. Uh, it's not yeah, the news. D- dudes, dudes fighting in the streets. Uh, All these people who are for some reason just playing rock guitar in the middle of this street <laughs> in the background. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. I didn't know uh, that was happening in our city. All right, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell about talk about Street Fighter. What? Okay. Uh, that game, I've never been so just, like, in love with the core gameplay of a game, but so pissed off at everything else. <laughs> um, Mortal Kombat 10 was touching that a little bit. I, actually, yeah, that, that game is actually far worse, but I don't, I don't like the gameplay in that one as much. Right, exactly. Um... Uh, but like the Mortal Kombat's actually a thousand times worse because of the the way the crypt works. Uh, yeah, the crypt was so bad. So ter- the, the worst. So that, unbelievably bad. Yeah, the the absolute goddamn worst. Um, <laughs> but back to what I was uh, saying. Uh, the crypt was awful, like just god awful. But this is almost as bad because they launched the game with barely any single player content, like barely any. Like there's survival and like a very short four thing story mode for every character. Um, oh jeez, that's okay. Yeah, there's there's not arcade mode. There's not time trials. Uh, wow. Ch- challenges challenge mode is not going to be in until March in a free update. <sighs> Same goes with the like the real like big story mode. That's not going to be in a free update until June. What? Uh, why didn't they just release this game later? Why did they re- they should have released it in June. That's Jesus they, Christ. Um <clears throat> but that said, uh and also like the tutorial is awful. Like, the, like, I feel like every fighting game developer needs to, like, go to Killer Instinct and just make that tutorial for their game. Right. The, the, like, you know, like, Killer Instinct is the only game that's like, this is what a linker is. This is what a, this is why frame data is important. This is how you do this. Yeah. This is what all this shit means. Um, hmm. So, jeez, that's so fuck. I don't know. Because like, what, what what bothers me so much is I remember we I remember Street Fighter Four coming out, and we had this exact same conversation of man that tutorial they need to they want to foster a new uh, community where we have like new people come in and we need to have tutorials. That are I, actually explaining some concepts. You, you know, at least the like I can say this looking back at the Street Fighter Four ones, like at least the challenge modes and the single player stuff can get you to a base level of skill to where sure. you can be competent. Like you're not gonna be winning a whole ton of games, but you can at least like 
be competitive versus yeah. this, which is literally like, well, we taught you how to walk and do your V trigger, but since every character's V trigger is different and doesn't really tell you what it is, it's... that's pointless. Like, I like Bremen showed us uh, during 60 Minute Access the microphone one with Mika, where she just, her V trigger, she gets on a microphone and starts talking shit. <laughs> and like it appears to do nothing besides absorbing one hit for you but depending uh, on how long you do it it makes your next throw hella stronger what yeah because she's a wrestler huh. and she's talking hype yeah, oh, okay yeah. i don't know about this character this sounds yeah. pretty cool uh and like zangief i found out that like if you hold it it go his his v trigger continues to make him spin faster pulling people to him and if you're really Jeez. close and you do it and you keep tapping the buttons it, it keeps hitting them over and over until the meat is depleted huh that's so cool. or like ryu his like makes it so uh guard breaks and stuns are more often and you can charge a hadouken so it breaks through a block and you can start getting in there on a combo Mm -hmm. uh, but like it doesn't tell you like what everybody's individual V trigger is, so you just have to like look it up or guess or figure it out on your own. Um, so I have to assume that like, they're just trying, to, they're just relying on the internet community to do the work for them. Well, like at this point, to, right? Like they have to be. Like they're relying basically, on, yeah. Like they're like Ray is pretty new to Street Fighter, and like it's gonna be like next time we do a game night, it's gonna be like me, John, and Bremen being like, "This is how you do this." Like, right. this, this is, like, this is why you want to do this situation. Like, if someone is blocking a lot, you actually don't want to wake up from being knocked down with a Sharyuken because it's just going to get blocked and you're going to get punished. You right. Know? Like, stuff like that. Um, you know. Like, it's, it's really bad because, like, the core gameplay is, once again, super awesome. It's, it's, it's even better than 4. But mm. the game is missing characters. Like it, you know, it only has sixteen characters. It'll, it, and they're gonna, they're adding six more via DLC. Which the good thing is, you can earn all those characters for free with fight points or fight right. money. Fight the, money. The, the fight money. The bad part about fight money is, like, you'll be able to get that first character no problem because you get a bunch of you get a crap ton of cash for finishing all the story modes for the first time. But uh -huh. after that, like, you earn it in, on, you, in combat. In online or on survival. And, like, I noticed playing online and doing survival, I got, like, a thousand for an hour of playing. Hmm. Which, apparently, new characters are going to cost 100k. Fuck. Uh, uh... You know they're probably going to do that thing Mortal Kombat did, where it's just like, you could buy them all separately, or for one small payment of $30, you can but, buy this collection that was just released. This doesn't uh, include next six, though. That, well, yeah, they have that. It's called the Season Pass. Oh, also, uh, apparently... Okay, so, look it up. Costumes are going to cost 40000 fight money. What? Uh, that's ridiculous. Oh, That's yeah. so dumb. Uh... And then, let's see, characters, all right, let's see, those are premium costumes. I'm trying to skim this for characters. Um, oh, do, do, do. Let's see, it's going to Street Fighter Five. it comes with six characters, six are on the way as DLC, and they're going to spread them out throughout the year. Uh, they're going through, let's see, you'll be able to buy them with fight money. The DLC characters are Alex, Guile, Balrog, Ibuki, Jury, and Urin. These characters were going to be around $6, which is exactly what they'll be if you buy them outright. Which, if you buy the season pass, you're actually going to be saving $4. Uh, and let's see. And it's going to, yeah, it's going to be 100,000 fight money per character. God. So, I don't know about you, like, I'm just going to, like, I'm probably just going to spend that 25 bucks on that season pass. Uh, as sad as that is to say. Yeah, they're they're basically. I don't know. I've been thinking about this the way Heroes and League of Legends and games like that 
No. But he, but those are fucking free. Yeah, I know, that, I know, I know. But it's difference. the same concepts, but it's even worse because now they're taking now their people are seeing how successful that business model is, and now they're applying it to like full sixty dollar titles, and it's like, like fuck, like, are you like, kidding me? It, it's like Killer Instinct is free, so like them being like here, pay for the new characters. Like, we're going to give you two characters to start and then make you pay for the rest or you don't get them. Like, okay, fine. You know, and like, if it was like Heroes of the Storm where it's like, every week you'll be able to use a new set of characters. Like, this week is like Ryu and, and Ken. Next week is Zangief and Mika. You know, we're just going to keep rotating them and the game's free. And if you want to buy all of them, here, spend $60. Right. Yeah, you know, like, that would be less gross you know, like at minimum, they're making it so you can earn a character, like the characters and costumes, for free. But like, I'm not sure how big of a time investment that's actually going to be. I do need to play more before I can tell you how much fight money that actually is. Right. Uh, but like right now, that's super gross. And what what's what's even worse about this particular moment is. At current, there is barely any single-player content, and because so many people are playing the game, the servers are messed up most of the time. Which is crazy because they've had multiple betas to prepare for this. Yeah, they've had like mold. They've had betas on top of beta. Like there are so many times I could have gotten to the Street Fighter beta. Yeah. yeah, and like I've been playing it all weekend, and I love the game. Like it's a super fun game, and it's if you like the core gameplay of it then, like, this is an amazing game that just happens to have a bunch of broken shit around it. Uh, and that sucks. Like, that's the, that is the worst kind of game, actually. <laughs> actually, the worst kind of game is a boring game, but still. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's a bad game for, like, the wrong reasons. Like, the devs are making a great game themselves. It's these business decisions that are being made you know, outside of the developers that are really messing this up. That and the servers. Yeah, which the servers, that's actually been starting to get fixed more and more. Like, over the weekend, I noticed that they they took the game down for a couple hours, and then, like, performance has been immediately improved. And, you know, it's not like the first time you've run into a game with, you know, bad servers initially. Gamers are used to that. It's not a Di huge yeah. deal. People can complain, but it's we're only really complaining about it because it's in addition to all this other nonsense around it. Yeah, like it, like if this game actually like if this game was like Street Fighter Four and had like a like even vanilla Street Fighter Four where it had like a full arcade mode and challenge modes and time attack, like it'd be like yeah okay whatever. Servers are down, uh, whatever. At least I can play something. Yeah, like. Because when you, because like Street Fighter 4, like I spent a lot of time, I, I played that game for, I, I pulled up my clock, because uh, it keeps trying how long you play, uh, when, like b b because I wanted to know how much of that game I played before diving into 5, and it's like, yeah, you played this game for 70 hours, bro. <laughs> and I think about that, I'm like, yeah, my man, I can say a good 20 of that was probably like in the single player just trying to like practice new moves and practice new characters and like stuff like focus canceling and shit like that yep um and now you can't really do that except out in survival mode but i'm not really fond of survival mode and most people aren't yeah, I don't think really. I don't think anyone really plays for survival mode. At least for the, as far as I've seen. Like, hell, you can make an argument that even the single player stuff is not something that anyone ever does. Although they're trying to make the story mode a bit more of a big deal now. Like, I think uh, time attack is important to have. Like, I've had fun with that, and I think the story, like, that stuff should all be teaching tools. Like, challenges are absolutely teaching tools. Like, I remember yeah. in Street Fighter Four, it's like. Focus attack into a Shariukin. Like, that teaches you how to do that. That's an important thing, or something like that. You know? Yeah. Like, or like, hey, with Zangief, close on them using the Lariat attack. You know, like, th th like, challenges are important to me because it teaches you, like, concepts that, like, yeah, in that isolated moment don't seem important, but if you're looking at the game, like, how, like, I want to get better or competitively... 
those challenges will show you things like, oh, I can totally use that to close on people or to, you know, be a cross up or whatever. It, it's it's something where I feel like that's something that people no, need to be no, doing Bronson. more. Yeah. What, Ray? Yeah, you know, you know what this game needs, though? They didn't, you know where they just need to go? They need to go to five fights at Freddy's and take that. This, that tutorial was perfect at five fights at Freddy's. Okay, you're you're grounded. You're grounded. <laughs> grounded. You're grounded. This was your idea originally. I'm just saying. I'd <laughs> let let it stay in that podcast where it lives. Oh, <laughs> uh, god damn it! Oh god, I figured this would be the last chance I ever got to bring it up, so I figured why not? Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, like like it's it's. I feel like fighting games should be story mode is used as a way to showcase characters so you can pick who you like to play naturally and then have your challenges be something to use uh, for like, you know, getting competitive, like you said, and then multiplayer obviously being the end result. Yeah, like, no, and obviously, like, if you played this in the arcade or you play it like I did with friends, it was always a case of, you know, like, your friends teaching you. And, you know, I, I guess, like, maybe this game is those them just saying, fuck it. And being like, you know what, the the core au- like, the core audience doesn't give a shit about this anymore, and we're just gonna make our game with our dudes, which not a good idea. Like for like our game for our our people who already are into this, and they're gonna show their friends, which in some cases is true. Like we're gonna show Ray how to, we're gonna teach Ray how to fight in the streets, right. Like that's the only good thing I see there is. That... I don't know. I learned how to fly like a bird. Oh yeah, Fangs. So have you seen the new character Fang? Like he has uh, the yes, shades. Yes. Like, uh, his his ultimate attack is to go up in the air, flap like a bird across the screen, and have it rain poison down. <laughs> okay, that makes it's sense. Pretty great. The Except best for all the parts where it doesn't, thing you know, ever. Yeah. He he's Jeez. he's a char- he's a charge character too. Oh God, really? Okay. Yeah. So that's fun. Huh? Yeah. Does he feel good to play? I I don't like. He's like interesting. Ray, like Ray has no grounding for it really, and like as a person who hates charge characters, I'm never going to use him. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's, fine. It, it's it's like it's like Guile, like. I love the character of Guile. Guile yep. is awesome. He has one of the best soundtracks in all of video games. But I'm never going to be a Guile player because he is a charge character. Yeah, that, uh, Guile was always the guy I picked uh, at Roller Kingdom uh, for Street Fighter II Champions, Champions Edition and could never play him. But goddamn, he was such a cool character with such a cool song. How can he not? I don't know. Um, yeah. Which also, he's not in the game right now, is he? Uh, he's <laughs> going to be one of those six DLC characters. But there's a character that like is basically him named Nash. Is it but... Charlie Nash or Charles Nash? Or... Yeah, it's Charlie Nash. Okay. Um, um, uh, Ken has a new look. Does he play okay now? Uh, he is. He's different than Ryu. Okay. But, like he, 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 he still has like the Hadouken and the and like the hurry and the dragon punch gotta but have the his, dragon punch but his like hurricane kick is way different than reuse like it goes at a like vertical angle what? and it's on fire what uh and okay. yeah so he, fire he fire kicks he, you into the sky yeah and he has uh he, what else did ken get and his like reuse trigger is a parry but his trigger is a um, is to like is a dash to move to the other side of someone, huh? Okay. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. That's uh, you know. I'm trying to think of other characters, any notable noticeable changes? Uh, I really like Radish from what I've seen. Ah, uh, Rashid. Yeah, or Rashid. Rashid, not Radish. He he's he's. I have seen some people online busting out some nasty combos with him. 
Uh, Zangief is my main, and they they have made it harder to close uh, in well, on I'm people. Shocked. You are shocked by Red Cyclone. <laughs> uh, or Zangief used to be my main, I should say, in Street Fighter. Oh, but you don't main him anymore? No, because they have made oh. it hard to be an aggressive Zangief player. You have to be very oh. defensive with him now. That's uh, not. That, they, that's all the fun of Zangief is just coming at him. Because he doesn't have that like green backhand, that like fist backhand move to help you close. What? So, so like you did. So like it's a lot harder to close. You still have your spinning lariat. Uh, your V trigger can like pull people into you, but like getting close to people with Zangief can be super hard. But he does have an air grab now. Okay. So right. there is some balance to him. Uh, but yeah, like playing Zangief, like I've been tooling around with him, and I'm trying to get used to playing him as a defensive player. Instead of like being really a fet, like just trying to pressure people with him, sure. um, I've gone up against quite a few Zangiefs, and I've because of like knowing this weakness, I've been like get away, get away, get it. Like it's like poke, poke, run away, poke, poke, run away. Right. Uh, one thing I do like that they did is like when you go to select a character if, to set as your online character to play as. They like have what they're good at, like on a on a chart. So mm. like on Zangief, it's like like all his stats, like health and power are maxed. Everything else is like set to minimum. Like Ken, okay. it's like mobility is super high, attack is kind of high, defense super low. Ryu, it's like range is high, uh, defense is high, and then like a bunch of stuff is like medium. Jeez. So okay, um. Yeah, like he he's yeah, he's a oh man. He he's like Zangief his changes are weird. Uh I will say that because of this I've kind of defaulted back into playing Ryu. Okay. Which I I really like Ryu in this game. Like it's he is very much a like weird combination of a zoning character with a regular with the regular like he's balanced like he's very balanced like he's, he's kind of like jack of all trades master of none uh all right. except at keeping people the hell away from you he's really good at that <laughs> um but yeah so cool know, any, any other questions about street fighter from either of you oh is is Fei Long gonna be coming? Uh, not in the first batch of DLC. I don't think so. Okay, that's the guy I always. Uh, and then no mention of Sagat yet. No, not him either. Uh, they yeah. uh, it's Alex Guile, Jury, uh, Urain, and uh, Abuki. And then okay. the, like Jury and Abuki and Guile are Buki. all awesome though. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, so. Uh, you know. It's, cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll say... Yeah, I'll say that I, I really like the core of the game. I'd say if you have people to play it with, are you a fan of, like, fighting games but having to learn some shit, or you already know a lot about Street Fighter, hella pick it up. Um, if not, if you are new to fighting games, you should probably go, like, I cannot stress this enough, if you are new to fighting games and have an Xbox One, play Killer Instinct. It is a game that is so unbelievably new player friendly. Um, but yeah. I don't, so. I, I don't know, like, when you first showed me KI, like, you're like, alright, let's try this, and then you just kind of crushed me in it. I was just like, this wasn't that fun. That's because you're playing against an experienced player, but like that game has the tools to teach you and the single player stuff to teach you how to be competent. Versus like I could play you in Street uh, Fighter right okay. now and like I could play you in Street Fighter right now and I'd fucking destroy you and then like throw you into the tutorials and you would be like, I still have no idea what I'm doing. So, and that's the that's the core difference. Okay. Cool. Uh so yeah. That makes sense. 
Uh, anyway, I haven't really played anything else. Uh, what about you, Aaron? You play anything the past week? Oh, let's see here. Uh, played some Here's the Storm. You may have heard of it. Oh, have you? Have you started playing online? Do you have a main? No, 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 no. I'm still trying to learn characters. I'm just taking these first few weeks as a way to try and uh, get to know the game, learn a couple characters, earn enough money to, to have a couple. Um, so I just bought, uh, with gold, I bought Johanna. Um, okay. She's, I she's, enjoyed, she's pretty good. I enjoyed playing Thanks. as her. Uh, right now, I'm trying a few of the free ones, and um, I'm trying to learn how to play uh, Karazim. He's uh, really good. He's really good. Uh, been enjoying that. Been enjoying. What's Karazim? Uh, He's the monk. He's the monk yeah. from Diablo. That's right. Oh, oh yeah. He's um, he's good. He's and very good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. When it came to to Karazim, I actually enjoyed healing a lot. Um, I'd say try Uther. Try Uther. Okay. He he's uh, my main, and he's listed yeah. as one of the best healers in the game. Okay. Uh, like my, last, my time, last time I pulled with, up a uh, tier list, he was one of the top two supports. Oh, okay. Because yeah, yep. my biggest problem with using Karazim is you have to you're a melee as well as a healer. So you have to, in order to do any damage, you have to kind of get in there and then have to jump back out whenever you have to do any healing or. It's rough, but uh, I enjoy it. I'm enjoying him. And then I, again, I bought Johanna. And uh, yeah, I may play a few more matches with him before uh, the next free rotation comes out. Which is Tuesday. Yep, yep. And then... Uh, hey, 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 hey guys. Oh, yeah. Do you, want, do you want to really annoy Anthony if he's listening to this? <laughs> what? Just everyone go Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, yep. yep. Thanks for that, Anthony. Go. Uh, hey, here's a candy bar, though. Here's some candy. <laughs> Thanks for the candy. <laughs> oh, is... God. Oh, yeah. Bronson, also news with heroes. I uh, officially hit level 30. Ooh, yay. We can do ranked games once I have three more characters. So I, I am able to do ranked. Have you gone into ranked yet? Rank's weird. Rank is weird. Like, like I'll okay. bring it up. Like, have you read the description for ranked, or can you read it yet? Or, uh, it, like every it's, time. it's basically like, uh, basically you start at rank fifty is what I'm guessing because between rank fifty and forty, you don't like a loss doesn't affect you in ranked. But after that, it's kind of like the Hearthstone thing where it's like you'll lose a star if you lose a fight, you'll go down. Okay, so it's her and you, there's rank system. Two different kinds of ranked play. There's ranked on your, yeah. There's ranked on your own. Like there's ranked with like you there's and like solo, a friend so, or two. So it's and league, then there's team ranked. So it's like league where there's solo queue and group queue. Yeah. Okay. So where you oh. could have like, I have my own level, but this is my team level. Um. Yeah, okay, that that makes sense. I know that uh, I just bought the wizard this past week, and this is basically the, my going to be my game plan for the wizard when I'm in t when I play with a team. Hey, please protect me because I will murder everything if you just protect me. <laughs> the wizard. A, yes, the wizard, the new character, Li Ming. Yeah. Li oh, Li Ming. Ming. Okay. All right. Yeah, like last night like, we got. What I want to do for that character, Bronson. It... Bronson, for that character, I just say we need one uh, Morales player and one tank, and it's basically done. Well, like, especially if the game gets to level 20. Like, those three together are pretty much unstoppable. Yeah, it... like, once you level 20, it's basically an unstoppable combo. Yeah, because at level 20, you get unlimited disintegrate. You can't use any other ability, but that means you can just keep firing off your ultimate attack. Ease. Which is, uh, have you seen her in a fight, that giant laser? No. Okay, her ultimate attack, uh, the one that you actually want to use, is a giant laser beam. That just ah, keeps... Damn. That just channels all the way until it's done. But if you spec into this ability, you can use it, and it makes it so you can use it forever. 
Jesus. So you so like so like we we're on this game and we needed like a push and I was at this building and I just I did the ability to use unlimited laser, but I can't use any of my other skills if I'm doing that. And just let off on this building and shred through its entire health bar. <laughs> um Jesus. Yeah, like it's a Dude, she, like, uh, I remember she just got nerfed uh, last week, and even after the nerf, I was reading up on tier lists, it's just like, she's still the best assassin in the game. (laughs) (laughs) Still broken as fuck. Not as broken, Uh but broken. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's very similar to Kel'Thas, like, if you get her to level 20, it's game over. Same thing with Kel'Thas, you get him to level 20, that's game. Oh, jeez. Pack it in. Uh, not all the time. It depends on how good the Ke- like the Kelthus player is. Yeah, Kelthus requires a little more skill than Li Ming does. But if you have a halfway decent Kelthus player who builds his character right, and they get him to level twenty, that guy will like just group up as a pack of five and protect him as he destroys every building in like three hits. Uh, um. So yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I've been playing some Heroes of the Storm. You have. Turns out, hey, that that's kind of a fun game. You you enjoy uh, it? Do you have fun with it? I do enjoy it. Like, uh, it's amazing how fast like a twenty seven mi- twenty seven minutes can go by. Uh, you just start, and then you and then you're going, and you're going, and you're going, and then by the end of it, it's like, wow, I felt like I've been through a trial. Oh, no wonder it's been like half an hour. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, we stream that game for two hours, or a little under, or a little over, every single Friday, as you know. And, yep. like, by the end of it, I'm just like, oh. just I'm just like, what is going on? Like, especially, like, like we played, th- we played three games this past Saturday, right? Because they went really long. Yeah. No, we played four. We played four. We, we, did we win that first one? I don't remember the first one too well. We, the first one we won. Then we lost the, the next second. one we lost. The next and one then we, we just crushed it. Yeah, we, we crushed I, it. I was just like, everyone go mid, F it. And like, we just pushed into their base and like, we won the game in like eight minutes. <laughs> uh, and then the last game we had. Yeah, that's wo- like the spider map. <laughs> yeah, and then the last game we barely won. Uh, because it, like, came down, like, whoever can get the Dragon Knight, and I got hit level 20 with Li Ming, and I was like, and we were like, alright, Ray's guarding the, the center dragon, so they can't claim it, so basically, eventually, we're gonna get it, because we're gonna claim it. Um, so yeah, that, I love the variety of that game, I love everything about that game more than the other MOBAs, uh, besides, like, Sometimes I do wish that it had some things from Dota 2 or League that those games have, like being able to gift characters, but that's a very minor thing. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, that Um, should be a thing. Like, if I want to buy Aaron Uther, I should be able to buy Aaron Uther. That would be really cool. Um, I would think, you know? Yeah. Because, like, I've been given gifts in League and Dota, but, like... Why doesn't Heroes have that? Like, Because we've had that on stream, too, where like people want to like buy us the Rainbow Unicorn. And I was just like, like you're going to have to DM me. So we can charge into battle yelling butt stallion. Yep. Go, my horse made of diamonds. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, dodge. Anything else you got to say about Heroes, though? Uh, anything about heroes specifically? No, other than I plan to keep going, uh, and it's kind of the driving force of me possibly getting a new computer in the next couple days. Uh, um, I I will say that yeah. sim- similar yeah. things have happened to me where I like I heard the new specs for uh, the next World of Warcraft expansion, and then these issues with XCOM like have had me thinking like. Maybe I uh, maybe I should start like <laughs> building that thing a little earlier. Like right, uh, yeah. L- like I had it. Like currently, I want to build my PC in April 2017, two months after I move. Okay, but but like 
I like right now I'm just kind of like, well, I could build it in like December of this year if I really uh, want to. Yeah. Yep. Like I like I already have a monitor, so that chops off two hundred and fifty dollars. And like next check I can buy the case <laughs> and the DVD drive. And like I'm at this point where like, well, I could buy it piecemeal the over Bronx, the course of the it... year. Uh, <laughs> what Ray? Yes you could. Ray, Ray. I heard Good Ray. Bronson, do it. Join the dark side. My PC is capable yeah, you, though. You hear me? Like yeah, so you're you're very quiet. Like you you, I I think you need to be loud for your microphone to work. Also, there seems to be a delay. I think I think you're hearing our voices like a second later. That could be the. But I don't know what what uh, to do that about that. Might be it. <laughs> um, yeah, like I don't know what would cause that. Happen. Right, I have no idea. But we eh. like we need to get into the priority of getting you a new router. I think that would solve a lot of our issues here. Um, yeah. Like, I'm Donate just going to... gold to, probably. to raise I mean, Battle.net I'm, I'm accounts. louder and closer to the mic now, but... Yeah, I think it's partly an internet connection because you also voice lag, though. Like, I, I'm going to I'm gonna pull up the uh, router I use. Do I? Yeah. I'm also going to, I'm gonna, like, pull up the router I use, and uh, also you keep asking me about headphones, and I'm going to send you those also. Um, Alright, sounds good. Alright, uh, um... So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm playing lots of heroes. Uh, I am very pro-heroes. Yeah. Um, you anti-hero? Oh! Like a bad political ad. <laughs> oh! <laughs> um, and then I've been playing a game called Devil Dagger. What the hell is Devil Dagger? Holy shit, Devil Dagger. Okay. I've never heard of... That. De- go- or devil daggers i apologize it's plural okay uh, what is this okay so it's five dollars it is basically if you took uh the art i wouldn't say art uh it's just fucking metal it's like like this dark doom like <laughs> uh room and it plays like geometry wars but a first person shooter in this small confined space what what uh, system is it for? Is it for PC? It's for PC. It's only for PC. At, it was it was on Greenlight a few months ago. And at, it just came out a couple days ago. And it's called Devil's Daggers. Devil Daggers. Devil Daggers. Okay. It, I it need is to, a part cool. of the reason I'm asking is because of the description. Daggers. The description. Like, um, you, you're yeah. You're gonna need a description. I pulled up a few from the user reviews. Here, I'll read them right now while you're pulling that up. Uh, um, my favorite one is. Devil Daggers is exactly the game that would be on a Law and Order Gamer episode, uh, which okay. is, is pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, another one is just all caps: blood skeleton, blood skeleton, blood skeleton, blood skeleton, blood skeleton. This, a few times over. This looks uh, like I'm watching the footage right now, and I'm just like, "What the hell is this?" It's fucked up. It's just a little. Geometry Wars thing, you try to last as long as possible, and then you just get on uh, a high score, and you can compete with your friends. Um, I just got into the... Uh, it was about like 2,250, somewhere around there. I don't know, I haven't looked in a little bit. But um, of like 8,000 players uh, that are on the leaderboard right now. And then so and that's all you're doing, is just trying to go as far as you possibly can. I've lasted for about 83 seconds. Uh, I like I'm watching footage on YouTube. Oh, wow. This guy apparently lasted for eight minutes. That's the top score, and that's screwed up. I don't even know how it happened. Uh, the, you're, wa- is... you're watching it. You're watching the replay. It's like <laughs> I don't know cheated. how this is happening. <laughs> this is fascinating. My only issue is like, it seems really dark. And you can't see anything. It's really dark. So, really? but that's what, what's great is you turn off all the all the lights in your house, and then you play this like on a giant screen. Oh, it's the best. You turn the sound up, the sounds is the best part. It The sounds that they have for, like, there you have a shotgun effect. Because what you're doing for people who don't have the uh, ability to pull this up on video at home is you're basically this guy uh, who, yeah, I, I guess, I, takes I a just, devil dagger. Um, I just turned on sound for this, and what the fuck? The sound's amazing! This is... And so you're sitting there, you, you wait, you open in this, like, 
uh, this small confined space. You can fall off the edges, but it's just this flat floor space. And then these like pillars pop up that spawn, I don't know, roughly skulls? eight skulls, eight skulls. And then sometimes they'll have like this different head, uh, this ram type skull. It's like a regular human skull, but with like a rams on what, the what, ram what horns. Is, what is this gun? It's like firing. It's not a gun. It's just this dude holding two fingers out, and then he just launches out like uh, daggers at an alarming at an alarming rate. And then uh, those are supposed you, to be daggers. Those are daggers. Okay. Uh, and so then you hold down the, your mouse button for rapid fire, but then if you like just click it, it fires shotgun blasts. Uh, and it sounds exactly like a shotgun, but you're just firing a hell of a bunch of daggers. Um, And then you're basically, to take down the pillars, you shoot uh, the red crystals, and the red crystals pop out, and you collect those. And when you get certain amounts, you get little Uh, power-ups. So one of them, you can switch them to three. You'll you'll be holding three fingers, and so you'll be shooting out more daggers. This is five dollars? Five dollars. It's a very tiny game, but it's very, very addictive. This is this is tempting. This 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 game does look rad. Oddly. It looks cool. It sounds cool, uh, and it you know each run, generally speaking, unless you're really good, tends to be less than a minute, and then you're immediately like, oh fuck, I know I could have done that it's, better, I, it's and then the oh god, it's retry. the super Meat Boy effect of just like I can try that again. But for this one the level of arena super shooter. Meat Boy. That that's what's called. Like that game has you restarting in like half a second. It's yep. like you fucked up, go again. Fucked yep. up, go again. Uh if you want, you can yep. watch your death. Right. But um well that's cool. But, I like it, it looks like a cool game. I weirdly enough, that's actually a game that I hope uh, like hits consoles too. That would be really cool. I uh, yeah, the problem would be uh just I feel like you wouldn't get uh, the most out of your experience just because the mouse is faster, way faster. Well, yeah, that's that's any goddamn. I know. I feel. I feel like it's, it's even more notable though in this game rather than other shooters. That that's um, that's why I am that, that like <sighs> like the skulls. All the skulls. Everything that moves can move faster than you. Just barely though. So you have to be like zigzagging. You have to be. Well, usually you should be circling. You shouldn't be zigzagging. You should be circling uh, well, at all times. Let, like, the whole mouse versus keyboard debate is, like, one of the many, many, many reasons. Mouse keyboard for... versus controller. Yeah, like, well, that's one of the many, many reasons why I... Ha- that's one of the many reasons why I'm uh, getting Overwatch on the PC. Absolutely. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh, when do you think you're going to build your new rig? Yeah, Overwatch is going to be great. Uh, oh, uh, I'm excited. I'm, um, I continue to be butthurt that I'm not in the Overwatch beta now that it's come uh, back. I know. I'm not. I, uh, especially because, like, my friend Jerrica has been in it since it started. But. Like, months ago. And I'm like, why do you hate me, Blizzard? Why won't you <laughs> notice me, Senpai? Look at the things I've bought. You have my Battle.net Battle. account on. People, right? They just pick random people. They're like, "Why, Blizzard Senpai? Why won't you notice me? Why?" He picked Cladoclism over Mass Effect Two. That should earn him a spot. Oh, uh, like, like the only product I do not have <laughs> on my Blizzard account is I haven't bought the Diablo expansion or the StarCraft expansions. Everything oh, else. Oh, see, that's where you fucked up. I I own every Warcraft expansion. I own Diablo Three and StarCraft Two. I I have played like. I have blown at least seventy dollars on Hearthstone. Uh, Here is the storm. I play every goddamn week. Really? D- d- really? <laughs> Do Obviously, <it's- laughs> you've never. But you've never been to BlizzCon. I have never been to a BlizzCon. That's true. Ah, uh, uh, see, there you go. Uh. So I need to need to start going to BlizzCon. Yeah. Well, need, oh, to go, well. need to go with that while I'm only like six hours away from it rather than like 20. So, oh, right. <laughs> uh, um, to answer uh, your question that you were asking before, uh, if, I, if I have a moment to talk to you after this podcast, I may start the process tonight. Buying uh, what and... is your budget? I'm kind of curious. It's around a thousand. Uh, okay. That's a little. That's a little fluid, but you, 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 I'd want to keep around there. 
You can get a nine seventy for that. That's that's a that's a really good card. That's a good card to keep you. Uh... Oh yeah, no, I've got this full. Oh shit, well, I may have lost my list. I may have to rebuild it. But I had a list already. I was gonna yeah. have you check it just to just so I could have someone who's built a PC before take a look. Um, now, one of my favorite things is like someone went to me with a build list and was like they had an AMD processor, and I started la- like I just wanted to start laughing and be like, "Oh, you're serious." Well, uh, you know, the, like, the, the, the PC Reddit page seems has a argument for AMD uh, in some cases. The, the argument for AMD is like, are you, is your build sub a thousand dollars? That that is the argument for an AMD processor. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The argument, like, for an Intel processor is like. Do you want the better processor in most cases? But you're gonna be spending a lot more money. Sure, right. Um. Yeah. So. But anyway. yeah, so I, so I'm working on that, but uh, to get some better performance for Heroes of the Storm and whatever other games I get. Um, yeah, dude, do you get to hop into Overwatch with us? I would love to. As soon as yeah. I get into this game beta or wherever. That's you might just have to wait for the full release, bro. Like yeah, sad, I know. I know. To say. But yeah. you can jo- you can join us on our weekly Blizzard yeah. stream. It really That'd sucks that you can't. Yeah, it really sucks we can't play that because Hammer Dude sounds like seems I, I miss Hammer Dude. He was my bro. Bastion, yeah, he's sweet. Tra- no, like I got to. I've like been watching videos of how to play Tracer, and I'm just like. God, I want this game so bad. That move, like, she has this move that I got to see her actually use on hit. Like, Hammer Dude's the guy with the shield, right? Yeah, the one who blocks. Yeah, okay, what she did is she, her ultimate attack is she has this bomb that, like, will almost one-shot anyone. So she she uses her dash attack to get behind Hammer Guy, sticks the bomb on him, and then uses her time warp to go back to the beginning of the level. And he dies, and the people around him also died. Jeez. It was just like, wow, that's that that was clever. That was <laughs> that was really. Um, the only game that Ray and I really don't play from Blizzard's lineup is StarCraft. Right. Um, that's yeah. I've tried uh, StarCraft, but that's, that's not my thing. Uh, like Dia- I think you'd probably get into Diablo if you played with us, but. I do no. need to play a little more Diablo, but no. Like, with one of the storm more right person, now, we man. could actually have a team. If we we could also like go through like fifty mice because that game is the murderer of mice. Um, like seriously, like which one? Diablo on the PC. You click to move. You click to attack. Right. Like. Like, play, like you can actively hear... Like, I remember uh, we did a video on Diablo 3, and the entire time you could hear me clicking in the background. <laughs> I mean, you know, Heroes of the Storm can be like that, too. Heroes can be. It's, it's not as bad, though, because you don't have the League stuff where you have to click to time attacks to try and get a last hit. Oh, God, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or Dota, where you're doing the same thing, but you're trying to get last hits and denies. Yep. Um, so, yeah, anything else? Uh, that'd be it for me, actually. Uh, Ray, how far, do, are you far enough in Fire Emblem to talk about it at all, or no? Nah? Well, I turned it on, and, and I got to the title sequence, and the title sequence was pretty cool. That's as far as I am right now. I haven't even hit new game yet. <laughs> Good title sequence, ten out of ten. I mean, I can try and talk, talk about it. I can tell you, I I can talk about Radiant Dawn or the original. We're good. You you can you can do what is known as a a, a uh, subjective re- or an objective review. It has <laughs> sound. Mm-hmm. It is a video game that you can purchase digitally <laughs> or at the store. Uh, Christ. Very good. <laughs> um. All right. Well, that's cool. Uh, Playing some right. devil daggers right now. You can beat this score. You guys need to play it so I can beat. So I can say hi. Beat your score. I I wish people would go back to playing Rezo Gun for that exact reason. 
<laughs> like Resogun was like the most played PS4 game for me for like a year because oh, geez. I, because like it's the Geometry Wars thing. Like I played a yeah. shit ton of that because it was always just like, well, fuck you. You like I remember that like there are three people on my friends list who we would just like be in this constant circle of like fuck you. I beat your high score, and like two days later <laughs> you get a message, no fuck you, and just go in this constant circle. Um, uh, God. So, anyway, uh, we got news. News to talk about. What? News, right. comments, articles, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, okay. I know. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It really it's is. A, That's it's fun. A, it's been a week. Can you believe it's been a week? I, I can't. I'm in disbelief every, every day. Every single day. Hmm. Uh, anyway... Uh, so the first piece of news is about a fighting game known as Killer Instinct. They have announced some nor- new ca- they've announced some new characters for their upcoming season three. Cool. Namely, the Arbiter from Halo. Oh, all right. So that means the season three roster so far is Rash from the Battletoads, which you ex- which most people actually got a preview of him, but if you bought Rare Replay back in August. Kim okay. Wu, a old standby from Killer Instinct 2. Tusk, a barbarian with a two-handed sword from uh, Killer Instinct 2. Gar- <clears throat> Gargos, a dark gargoyle deity who appeared in the Season 2 arrival mode. And then, of course, the Arbiter. Cool. Uh, All right. it, it is once again being developed nice. by the... It is once again being developed by the fine folks at Iron Galaxy... Who are famous for Killer Instinct Season 2 and Dive Kick. Good old Dive Kick. Dive Kick. Dive Kick. I love how half the people at Game Night love Dive Kick and half the people hate it. It, It's this this wonderful game. Still undefeated, even after the party. Um, Let's see. I was surprised that Lily gave you such a good match. I'm the best. Me, me, me. Right, like that. That caught me off guard. It's just that. Ca- it's that character. Which one? Like that one with like the pixel character with the sword. Like, oh, I yeah. hate him. Yeah, Nidhogg. I hate that character. He's, Nidhogg's a real dick. He's 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 not fun to play. In Nidhogg that game. is literally the definition of a. I don't. He is literally the definition of the. This is the troll character who is supposed to win every fight. Because he can. Start every match by throwing a sword. So if you aren't ready, it's just bow in the face. That's that's why. Like if you are new to the game, that is an issue. But the second you know he can do that, you should probably start most most matches out with diving, jumping. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's basically what you have to do. Is just like as soon as the match starts, you need to go in the air and just hope he's not just gonna stay on the ground until you land. Yeah. So because mm. I mean. And unless you're like the doctor where you can float to them, they kind of just have to wait for you to land and then cha 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 katana to the face. Yeah, like Because they what... start out with that sword every match. Like they can use that at the very beginning. I'm just like, that's a little cheap. At least build the gauge a little. Eh, I I don't think that that's much of an issue because it's also like I I main Doctor Shoals, so it's like, oh, they're gonna throw it when I land, but I can change my trajectory of where I'm gonna land because I'm Doctor Shoals, so it's not as much of an issue. Um, so yeah, I don't know. All right. Anyway, well, um, yeah, I don't know. I like uh, <laughs> so yeah, cool. That's... Never played it, but dive kick's fun. Dive kick's fun. Oh, That's dive kick, yes. That. Dive kick is fun. Dive kick is f- it, it's fun. It's cheap. Not, good game. It's not as good as Shack Fu, but it's good. <sighs> okay, so I should explain this, shouldn't I? Uh, I think you did already. I yeah, think Ray, Ray loves Shack Fu because it, he yeah, is. I think we have, have explained it. Yeah, yeah. Ray, Ray loves Shaq Fu because even though it's terrible, he is the current Game Expo champion of Shaq Fu. Um, cool. all right. You know who else is the current champion? In Bronson. Who? Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos are indeed the current world champion. Did you 
you not here? Oh, God. Um, yes, they are. That'll start getting annoying maybe in a few weeks, but until then, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Uh, so, Smite is coming to PS4. Smite okay. is officially coming to PS4 and is going to enter its closed alpha today, which that was two days ago as of recording this. Uh, and <clears throat> and uh, players will um, be able to unlock a special skin. You can link your PS4 account to your PC account and access a different special skin. When it officially launches on PS4, it will be free to play, and they'll have people will have five access to five gods without paying. Alternatively, players can purchase the Founders Pack for thirty dollars to unlock all present and future gods, four hundred gems, and some exclusive skins. Hmm. Okay. I'll be honest. Like, mm, if you told four hundred gems. If it, like, if you told me that like that that a MOBA that I that I liked it was like, let's say it was in beta. Like, if I was like, if I was playing Heroes in Alpha and they said, "Yo, for thirty bucks, you get every character that will ever come out for this game when it's out," I would have been like, "Happily Ever. take it, take take double that." In fact, <laughs> what? what? Here's sixty, just because I can. Uh, like, I really don't have the money to be doing this, but fuck it. That, that is fantastic. Uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, Smite. Anyone ever play that? No, but I've seen a little bit on it. I've seen pictures. I've played it on my Xbox. It seemed cool. Like It's, it's an interesting take on MOBAs. Okay. Uh... Anyway, moving uh, forward. So last week I said the PS4 version has some issues when it comes to the occasional frame hitching on Firewatch. Well, a uh, patch has come out that uh, that is going to increase draw distance and shadow render distance uh, and remove texture popping along with those unstable frame rate issues. Hmm. Oh. Okay. And the PC version is still completely fine. Yeah. Nice. All right. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, speaking of patches, Capcom is going to address the rage quit penalty issue. Capcom has confirmed that it is addressing an issue that permits players to rage quit without a penalty in Street Fighter V. Players who routinely exit games in an attempt to avoid defeat are currently able to retain their win streaks without punishment. Speaking to Eurogamer, Capcom said I can confirm that this is something we're going to address to make gameplay experience that all the fans can enjoy and be rewarded fairly for. Uh, they have recently provided an update post-launch uh, that how they are going to highlight a couple of bad situations. Hmm. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Namely that, yo, we just fixed the servers right now. So Right. More patch news! XCOM 2 is getting an update. I would hope. Uh, it has released a hotfix for XCOM 2, which will, is supposed to fix known crashes and improve performance issues. Uh, it's been having performance issues since launch, but this latest update should remedy of those. Issues include unable to progress scan and geoscape after completing the tutorial, and unable to load saves uh, with a chrysalid cocoon. Uh, have been fixed, and the update will also fix previously affected saves. Adjustments to textures have been made to assist with frame rate spikes. In addition, 8 times multi-sampling has been removed from the default maximum setting. Uh, let's see. And that's about it. So, good. Okay. They're fixing that. They're fixing yeah. that game. Uh, going forward, Apple has answered has announced that they are doing a new phone trade-in program. Okay. Starting today and currently only available in Apple stores, Apple's trade-up installment program gives you the option to trade in their old phone and pay a monthly fee that's cheaper than the company's ongoing phone upgrade plan. Even older devices like the iPhone 4 are eligible for trade-in. Uh, iPhone... Uh, the new program works like this. You decide to upgrade to a 6 or 6S, and the resulting monthly payment ends up being $15 for 24 months. 
Or if you're going from a four to a to a one twenty eight gig six S, you'll end up paying roughly. Oh, okay, so if you're like going from an old phone, where the, uh, like if you the current bill would be like thirty five dollars a month, but if you trade in your old iPhone, it cuts it down to like fifteen dollars a month. Hmm. Uh, they said Apple's new program is open uh, to Android oh. and Windows phones. Uh, okay. If you don't want to trade your current device for an iPhone, there's an option to ask for credit as well. Credit for iPhones varies by models and size, while Apple will offer up to $300 for Android and Windows devices, depending on what device it is, obviously. <laughs> uh, you know, this is cool. Like, I'm currently paying on a payment plan for my current phone, like which is like $28 a month. So, like... Had my old phone not been broken, I probably would have traded up and made my bill cheaper. Uh, right. I don't know. Ray, you're looking at new phones. Uh, you going to consider this? Uh, possibly. I like, I kind of like, I don't know, like keeping my old phone just as like an MP3 might be what I do. Just due to the fact that if I can't afford like 64 gigs of memory or 32 i was like well 16 is not bad if i'd keep all of my music on another device i think that the iphone 6 it's definitely something to consider considering i've been wanting considering i've been wanting a new phone for now for a while now i actually think that the uh i actually think that i don't know the 6s does have a uh, 16 gig for a while there i thought they made it so 64 was the lowest which in my opinion it kind of is because 16 gigs is nothing nowadays like 16 gigs Mm, dream right especially like if you have an apple music account or listen to podcasts like 16 gigs is nothing like, it might as well just be like, you can use this as a phone, and then you'll have to stream everything. Right. Uh, what are you doing uh-huh. for a phone these uh-huh. days, Aaron? What do I do on it? Oh, it's just a Reddit machine, pretty much. Um, no, like, what 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 phone are you currently using? Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. Motorola something? X? Okay. Something like that. Right on. The cheapest one of those. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, it's a smartphone. <laughs> it does the things. It does the things. It does the things you need a smartphone to do. It does the things that I needed to do. It so, downloads them Android apps. So watch pornography on the bus. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've watched someone do that before. That was... <laughs> Don't tell his secret. Well, you know, I figured this is a safe space. It's also like five years ago, so I don't. I think he's cool. Um, also, I don't think he cares, man. I'm sorry if you're on a bus and you're just putting in <laughs> XNXX and just searching things up. Like, yes, because I yeah, obviously just watched all that porn on the bus. Actually, <laughs> like, I knew this dude in high school who like went up to me and was just like, "Yo, check this out!" And he busted out like he was showing me like a movie on his PSP, and then he just like starts showing like all this porn he had on his PSP. And I'm just like, <laughs> why are you bringing porn? Like, one, why are you bringing pornography to school of all places? Like, because, dude, they don't want you to. I'm fighting the system. To. Okay, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I don't. I'm okay with this. You could then... work it if if we were still like uh, back PlayStation One era of marketing. Just be like, look at me with my with my porn on PSP. I'm a rebel. Play Sony. Ah! That's that's the only thing I can think of. The '90s were a weird it's... time. <laughs> They're so good. I've been watching some of the <laughs> the demo discs uh, from those the magazines. The '90s were of that a fantastic time. time. And well, the '90s were were pretty good. But in terms of like video game culture and community, the early 2000s are something else, man. I. It was that era where Midway was getting like uh, just hardcore metal and screamo band. Well, not even screamo because screamo wasn't happening then. It was like weird hard rock mixed with pop punk kind of sound into their MLB Slugfest games and Mortal Kombat. It's it's like how Madden during their like early to mid 2000s had like all this like rap and punk music in the menus. Yeah. And like 
I kind of dug it because like it turned me uh, on to a lot of songs that I really like, but I also found it really weird. But it was uh, weird, yeah. No, there are some songs during that time that I enjoyed, but there was just this the way music went, the, the kind of music that they played for kids, for gamers during that time. It's it's, it's just a weird sound that will never be heard again. I I was actually watching a Let's Play of Super Mario 64 was at work the other day and like I I like their like bl- like how that is like that the composer of that game Koji Kondo is like I'm going to make the world's like most addictive bluegrass song that's 30 seconds long and loop it for any time there's a race <laughs> And then when you fight Bowser for the last time, like shout out to the organ player because this shit's gonna be crazy. So, <laughs> just... oh. Mar- actually, Mario has probably the like looking back at the history of video game music, like it's Mario probably has the like, Mario and Zelda are the two franchises where I'm just like you have the most endearing music over your entire history. Hmm. Like, Absolutely. Like, Final Fantasy is kind of up there, but, like, there are so many Mario tracks where I can just, like, listen to and just, like, kind of just bop my head to and enjoy. Yeah, um, even the, even the, one of the, the newer ones with the what, what. I still like, I still like that song. I, I yeah. like the song, but, man, the fucking turtles kicking out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. The turtles kicking up. What, what. Yeah. Uh, oh lordy uh yeah but anyway on to fallout dlc ray you like fallout kinda i think you still own that game i think kind of yeah ish maybe (laughs) all right uh so the first set of dlc is coming is the atom is the automatron it'll retail for 10 bucks and it's coming out in march the mysterious mechanist has unleashed an evil hor- an evil horde of robots into the Commonwealth, including the devious Robo Brain. Hunt them down and harvest their parts to build and mod your own custom robot cha- companions. Choose from hundreds of mods, fixing limbs, armor, abilities, and weapons like the all new lightning chain gun. Even Ooh. customize their paint schemes and choose their Ooh. voices. Oh, more creation okay, that tools and videos. Pretty cool. More creation tools and video games. Don't care. Um, I know, but that yeah, hopefully you know. No, no good know. game has creation tools. I think when you build the entire game around it, that's fine. But when you just like make it part of this game that's supposed to be like going into this world and exploring, it hurts that game. Because like if you playing fallout 4 i like there were parts of where i'm like i'm having a good time oh you need to go salvage all this crap to build your town to get this benefit that you need to progress in the story and that is what i hate Ew. yeah versus, I don't know, there, there are definitely some versus mario maker which yeah, is yeah I, I feel you Versus Mario Maker, which is an awesome game around building stuff, because they're like, hey, here are these really intuitive tools to make bomb-ass Mario levels. Think of something neat. Mm-hmm. Um, Think of something neat. And then someone's like, I'm going to make a working calculator. And then I'm going to be like, what the fuck? How did you figure this out? <laughs> or then someone's going to figure out, like, hey, if you right? play... Th- yeah. Or, like, someone's going to be like, hey, if you play through this level and sprint the entire time, the musical cues will play Sweet Child of Mine. I mean, you know, <laughs> Little Big Planet's been doing that, but also that's another game where it's like they have their story mode, but it's made using the tools. Yeah, like, using the tools in Mario Maker is simple and fun. Using, like, Little Big Planet, I made some pretty good levels. It took, like, two months of research. Well, absolutely, but if you did, you know, if you actually put it into work, you're still, you're making some, you know, you're making dead space all over again, or you're making uh, whatever, thanks to the tools that you use there. There's not a whole lot you can do in terms of telling stories other than uh, getting a power-up that just changes your costume and then hoping you hang on to that power-up. 
Yeah, like, but that, still, I mean, it's, that's not that's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about how these games seem to get it right, whereas Fallout Four it just seems kind of odd. It but just seems I think like, for Fallout Four fans, Fallout fans in general, I think are going to enjoy it quite a bit. Like, I think that like it feels really like yeah, just like and, if you're a fan of the Fallout series, you're gonna enjoy that. I like I feel it feels really forced into that game. Like it feels like hey, we have this cool idea and this cool tech. And we could shove it into another game, but like Fallout Four needs some new ideas. So because they didn't bother to change anything about that game other than where it was placed. Basically, like yeah. they cha- they changed where it was placed. They made the shooting slightly better, so it wasn't like awful. Still not great, but it's passable. And said, "Man, we really need a new idea for this. What are we going to do?" I mean, that's I coming from us who are not big on Fallout, but... I, you know, I gave I, I liked it a lot more than I liked 3. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, sure. I liked it a lot more than I liked 3. So, that, you know, that's good at least. Uh, that said, it's still, like, the shooting isn't particularly good... The narrative isn't great. The game is so buggy. It like, especially on consoles, like the game is so unbelievably buggy that it shouldn't have been sold. Probably. Yeah. Just, absolutely, I agree with you there. Like, fucking train wreck. It was a train wreck, but it sold really well because a lot of people, I guess, just didn't seem to care. They had their fun regardless. I, I will always quote Brad Shoemaker on this. A lot of people are dumb and have bad opinions. Oh yeah, I know. But uh, at, basically, with this money, it means it's probably not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, yeah. Whatever. It's yeah. If they it, like it. They like it. It's like Call of Duty. It's not going to stop the games I like from being made. Right. That's yeah. Someone so. someone's going to make Saints Row Five, right? <laughs> That's got to happen at some point, right? Maybe, maybe not, but even if they don't, Someone. there'll be a Saints Row light game that comes out in a little while. Yeah, someone's gonna be like, how do we improve upon the president inside the Matrix with superpowers fighting aliens? Make the aliens luchadors. Yep, done. There we Free go. Free idea. Make the aliens Because in the DLC, you already ride a Velociraptor, so I mean, where do you go? You gotta go pro wrestling. Uh, yep. Which they did a little bit in Saints Row the Third, actually. So. Yeah, they did. They uh, they did like a bunch of movie parodies. They yep. they had they had an alien overlord sing uh, "You Got What I Need" by Biz yep. Marquis. Uh, did Lord. those games really happen? Is that, <laughs> Sometimes is that... <laughs> I wonder. Sometimes I wonder about whether that toilet level ever happened. <laughs> is, is 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 like is Saints Row just a fever dream that like? the collective like a group of people just thought up and thought it was fucking awesome as hell and just agreed that it was a real product i feel like those people and the people who made all the cg and story for amped three are like in the same camp of there's this two-year gap where we were working on something i don't i don't remember what it was it couldn't be what i'm thinking of those had to all have been just awful dreams after an awful night of drinking (laughs) <laughs> like do they just get high on fucking peyote and get go into the <laughs> office and be like hey we made this thing do you want to sell it <laughs> well for amped it made sense because that studio was going out of business and it was their last game so it's like whatever we'll make this seem we'll like we do were on whatever drugs the fuck we want <laughs> yeah and then saints uh, row is like we sell better when you guys are baby. ridiculous so it's yeah. like yeah, it's like we sell better when like instead of trying to rip off GTA, you do your own weird thing. You just be dumb, and yeah. that works. Uh, I almost wonder I... though, because that first Saints Row game was real serious, if I remember correctly. Yeah, like it had a couple of things, like it had a couple of jabs at GTA and things like that. But it was like it was basically like almost a clear GTA clone. And then the second one got a little lighter, but even then it just wasn't. But like Which three. I... I figured that was because uh, that I feel like was Saints Row the first uh, released uh, before GTA Four. Yeah, yeah, the first one. Because came out. I feel like I feel like they saw GTA Four succeed 
which meant they felt that they were going to stick to the serious route. And so they know people love games like San Andreas, where you can just do dumb shit. And they just went full on that way and thus gained a following for it. Yeah, like Saints Row 2 came out a, like a couple of months after GTA 4, which is also why it's kind of serious. But like with 3 and 4, they were just like, okay, GTA is going to be serious. So we need to be stupid as hell. Yep. And, and it worked. Man, man, like when you dive out of that airplane. It works. Great. Oh my god. That you, opening you, sequence is the best. I bought into that game immediately after he jumped out the second time. Yeah, you jump out of the airplane sh- in a tank, shoot a bunch of dudes, jump out of the tank, jump into another airplane with guns, akimbo style, just shooting everyone inside hop out of the back, get back into the tank, and parachute on top of a penthouse while Kanye West Power plays in the background. I think Kanye West Power was a, was a separate miss- mission where you had to jump into someone's that's, backyard. That's right. That's right. It, uh, oh, my God. Still. Fuck. Still. That's still an amazing moment. It's like, just, I'm glad that mission exists just for that opening sequence. Just, uh, um, God, that game is There's a bunch of dumb stuff that crazy. happens in there, and it's great. Ray, uh, Ray, Ray I'm, I'm gonna add that to our let's play list I'm gonna add those games to our let's play list like the, it needs to happen like you need to see what Why those games game. cause you need to understand this fever dream of like learning how to be a Mexican luchador by driving with a tiger in the car yep I was told that God, just there's so many... a whole scene. There's a whole scene where you were just set to drive around the city and you listen to uh, Sublime. Uh, there's a scene in that game where Burt Reynolds tells you to go stop the zombie apocalypse. Yep. It's it's basically if really? you ever if you ever liked Archer, I feel like the main male voice character, or at least the writing just in general, is very Archer like in some respects. I, um, I, 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 that game became a thousand times better for me though when I picked the British voice. Oh, oh Jesus! I can't even imagine how good that sounds. It's fantastic. Like he, he and then, has, like well, I, every t- like from now, like I just associate Saints Row three and four with the British voice. That's how good it is. <laughs> uh, and then of course you could choose zombie. Oh yeah, just have them just gurgle and slur everything. Oh. Yep. I like how in four there is a setting for Nolan North. Yeah, it's like male yep. voice one, male voice two, male voice three, Nolan North. <laughs> um, Crazy games. God, they were great. Four <laughs> was my four was my game of the year that year. Like it, it I like I I. Came on a podcast and said this game is an eight out of ten, but it is the best eight out of ten. <laughs> uh, like that. Good lord, what a weird argument! But yeah, I totally uh, know what you mean. Um, uh, back to Fallout DLC. Yeah, <laughs> Fallout was done. We were, we had um, set our piece on Fallout and its DLC. Oh, uh, there's there's still some more news though. Sadly, oh, okay. uh, Sadly. there's the five dollar wasteland workshop, which is a workshop to design and set cages to capture live creatures from raiders to death claws, tame them, and then have them fight each other. Okay, great. Finally, the first real piece of DLC is twenty five dollars, and it's called Far Harbor. It's a new case to tackle with Nick Valentine, and is supposed to come out in May of this year. Uh, hmm. in a new case from Nick Valentine's detective agency leads you on a search for a young woman and a secret colony of synths. Travel off the coast of Maine to the mysterious island of Far Harbor, where higher levels of radiation have created a more feral world. Navigate a growing conflict between synths and the children of Adam and the local townspeople. Will you work towards bringing peace to Far Harbor, and at what cost? It creates the largest landmass for an add-on they have ever created filled with new faction quests, settlements, creatures, and dungeons, and more powerful, higher-level armor and weapons. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Given the expanded DLC plan, the price of the season pass has gone up from $30 to $50. However, if you've already purchased the season pass uh, before March 1st, then it stays at $30, and you get all the stuff they're offering. 
Okay. And considering this first set of DLC here is 55 bucks by itself, uh, you know, or no, 40 bucks by itself, and they're planning to do a couple of more of these, you're probably getting your money's worth. That's what I'm guessing, at least. Right. Yeah. It's a shame I don't like these games. Like, it's... I know. It's, it's a shame, I, you know, in an ideal world, we love all games, even the shitty ones. But, yeah, yeah, well... Um, uh, but yeah, that's... Yeah. Whatever. You know, people love their Fallout, and it's it sounds like that, that big add-on is going to be uh, pretty cool. Yeah, so. it looks like that looks like it's going to be well worth the... Like, that alone seems like it's worth the season pass if they're doing a couple more of those. Yeah. Right. So... All right, guys. Uh, we got two news, two last news stories. Uh, one's an article by the fine folks at uh, the Imagine Games Network, mm-hmm. IGN, and the other one is the Vita is turning four years old this week. What? The Vita is four. Four. Mm, how's it doing? It... Beep, beep, <laughs> beep. Man, what a somber birthday party. I guess I'll... Can I return these balloons? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Jeez. I don't know, man. It's a... That is a game... Like, that is a system that, like... It's a lot better than it should be. Like... (sighs) You you look at the games that are out for it, you're like... You're like, eh, it seems okay, but then, like... Every person I know who owns a Vita is like, I fucking love this thing. Mm. So, and like, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that it's like, it's amazing hardware. Like, the actual hardware of the Vita, like, just makes even the new 3DS look like a piece of crap. (laughs) But, like, it... But, it, like, all its games are, like, indie games that you can play on PS4. Or, like, weird Japanese stuff. Yeah, it was weird that they made this this technological, you know, feat of a portable device. Yeah, like it was like, like, then, this, like this thing was like, yeah, this thing can play PS3 ports. Right. Uh, but the then it immediately the company was like, oh, we're appealing to indie gamers. Well, these uh, these two aren't going to line up very well. Well, it's like what happened was is they launched with Uncharted and they had Killzone and Little Big Planet announced and all this other stuff. But no one was buying the fucking thing. I was like, we didn't, we didn't it, really need like a, a smaller Uncharted experience. I feel like, um, I, although, although I'm sure it's not a bad game. I think it's a similar situation to like the PSP God of Wars. But those um, games were awesome. Yeah, which are like, you know good games. But it's like, eh, I'll stick with the numbered games or something. You know, uh, um, and then there, then there, I remember uh, Wipeout 2084 came out and people. Did not re- uh, react well to the frame rate of that game. Um, um, like, I look at the library for the Vita, particularly in my own collection. I'm just like, this game. Like, I own so many games for this system, like on accident. <laughs> uh, which are you just an unconscious defender of the Vita? You just have these. You like take a nap, and it turns out you like. Uh, slept walked all the way to the mall and are just buying Vita games one at a time. How did these get here? I don't, I don't, I don't buy I don't buy these. Okay, so <laughs> uh, no, a lot of it's because like a lot of their games are cross by. Like a lot of their games are cross by. Sure, and then okay. and then like I buy a game for the thing like once every three months for like a trip or for my commute. And mm-hmm. then you throw on the fact that like. There's a lot, like I said, a lot of cross-buy games, and then we get a lot of review copies from Jap. Like, we're really good with Japanese publishers for whatever reason, and cool. that's who's like primarily releasing games on the Vita and giving us review codes. Okay. So, like, like when most people look at the Vita library, they're like, "Well, what's this shit?" Like, when I look at, it, I'm just like, "Yeah, look at this just like massive amount of great indie games and." Man, have you seen like all these awesome Japanese strategy games? 
Oh, man. Um, and like, check this. Uh, and check this out. It's this visual novel court simulator. That's really cool. See, like, um, it's, it's just cool that it exists, um, and that these games can exist in some uh, shape or form. Like, but like, that yeah. system that does really well in Japan, and I'm glad that like somebody is committed to porting those games over to America. Right. Like, like, I'm so glad that someone was like, hey, let's bring this Danganropa thing over. And then, like, I reviewed Danganropa, and I gave it an 8.5, and was like, this game is phenomenal, and it's only on this platform. <laughs> um, but no one's that, talking about it. It's just... Yeah, like, that... that does, like, that, does that have more to do with the console or the game? I think it has to do with the fact that, like, it doesn't have, like, a Zelda or a Pokemon or, like... Or, like, anything like that. So it doesn't have those, like, tentpole releases that so many people focus on when buying a system. Which One is those a... things, like, I feel like, I feel like portable systems, I think, would benefit most from making those old mascot games again. Your Jack and Daxters. Yeah, your... like, they, they did, like, a perfect port of Sly Cooper 4 on the Vita. Yeah. And I think that's a perfect portable game, like Vita portable game. And, uh, and it's game. my favorite Sly Cooper. And I pl- and like I had the option to play it on my TV. I played it on the Vita the entire time. I played straight through it on the Vita. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think they could do that with Ratchet and Clank and. Uh, the Ratchet and... and Clank, like they released the Ratchet and Clank collection and the Sly collection on Vita. Uh, both were sure. pretty good, but had some frame rate issues. Um, what's exceptionally popular on Vita is visual novels. Really? Like, they are everywhere on this damn thing. And, like, and they get released in the States, too. So, like, somebody <laughs> is buying these or else they wouldn't be bringing them to America. You know? But, like, I can't tell you how many times I'm, like, like looking for a new Vita game and it's, like, visual novels! <laughs> or, like, strategy games! Um, that's interesting is, is it, has the Vita just become an otaku machine um kinda <laughs> and like basically they're like wait no we know this is our audience this is okay let's just keep going like I think I, I think they know that it's this machine that is for uh like it, it's it sells mainly in Japan and they realize that there is there is money in the states to be made on some of this Japanese stuff, and indie developers make a lot of money on it also. So they they bother to port stuff to it, right? You know, like it, okay. it's you know, and and, and like I remember the Guacamelee guys came out and said, uh, the Guacamelee guys came out and said, yo. Vita owners buy a lot of games. Like, mm-hmm. like the, the, I remember them saying that like, like one out of every seven Vita owners bought Guacamelee. Wow. Oh, uh, and like they had the, and not only did they have that, but it's the the fact that like Sony did a poll of all their like of every Vita owner that would answer it and like 90% of them are satisfied with the system. Oh, Jesus. So and I love my Vita. I think it's a great system. Uh, I'm playing Final Fantasy 10 on it at present actually. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> I actually that was the system that I got the platinum trophy for PlayStation All-Stars on. Ooh, nice. Yeah, you know, like Rayman Legends is on it. Like there, there, there's a lot of really great stuff on it. It sounds like something that would be really awesome. I don't know. I just uh, right honestly, I'm, I'm on more of a PC yeah. uh, route right now myself. Uh, what's your, what are your thoughts on the Vita? Considering you've had yours for about a, a, almost a month now. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's nice to have something like a handheld. It's just I like the handheld aspect to it. Like, most of the games on it, I really just play on my console, so I'm not really that interested in those, but, like, it's really nice having that portable aspect. Like, that's where I played Digimon, uh, Persona 4 Golden. Like, I'm enjoying the games for it, but, like, none of them, like, really... Like, other than... If it wasn't for the fact that I could, I can take it with me places, I would not own a Vita. 
Like, I, I prefer I mean, my 3DS to it, in all I, I honesty. Mean, I definitely get that, but, that, like, that's part of the whole portable system thing. Like, I... Like, Rogue Legacy is, yeah, it's on my PC, I have it there, and I have it on my PS4, but, like, the fact that I can take it with me on the bus into work makes that a, it makes it a valuable system in my mind, you know, and also, you know, yeah, so, I don't know, we'll see, that's, I I hope that Sony continues to support it, I know at PSX they came out and said, like, hey, we're, we're all, we are supporting it, it's just it, we're not going to be making any any big name, like, moves for it. It's all going to be smaller stuff. Hmm. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll see. Alright, well, last news story is IGN did the top 25 Wii U games. Same as last time, I'm just going to run through the, the, the first 15 pretty quick, and then we can talk about the top 10. Uh, 25, Disney Infinity 3.0. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, 24, Fast Racing Neo. Have you heard of this game, Aaron? I played it at PAX uh, it is last aw- year. It's awesome. That it is pretty is, awesome. It's 15 bucks. Like For those of you waiting for F-Zero, quit waiting. Pick this up. Or another Wipeout. Yeah. Uh, yeah. New Super Luigi U. Hmm. Uh, Stealth Inc. 2. Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. I love all the love Guacamelee is getting on these. Uh, Affordable Space Adventure, SteamWorld Dig, Monster Hunter, Lego City Undercover, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That should be in the top ten. <laughs> That's This is a crime. I, I have not heard a lot of love for Tropical Freeze beyond you, but um, uh, I don't know. It, it seems like it'd be cool. Yeah. I need to uh, play it. I need to play it so I can find out for myself because it's the the music is great. Hmm. Uh, moving forward, we got Xenoblade Chronicles X, yep. Rayman Legends, okay. Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Hmm. New really? Mario. New, that game is awesome. It's a really good puzzle game. Uh, New Mario U, NES mm-hmm. Remix. All right, top ten, which actually we can talk about. Number ten, Splatoon. What? How is that not higher? God damn it, <laughs> Aaron! Your love of Splatoon—it's wonderful. It, it, the, the game is so goddamn charming. Uh, I don't. I don't care how many Mario's or Zeldas you have to throw at me. That game is great. Okay, well then, what's ahead of it? Are, are you a squid now? Or are you a kid now? I am both at the same time, man. I'm constantly flipping in between. Uh, number nine, Pikmin three. Yay! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> number eight, Shovel Knight. <sighs> sure. Number seven, Minecraft. Well, yeah, I guess that's yeah. Fine. Okay, number number six is bullshit. This should have been top two. Fucking a. Okay. Uh, Bayonetta two. Bayonetta two, yeah. Fucking that that shit is top two. Well, IGN, let's hear what's in front of it then. Let's see. IGN's on crack. We gotta find uh, out what beat it to the top five. Uh, Wind Waker HD is five. That's okay. Best Zelda in my mind. So yeah. Uh, number four, Smash Wii U. Uh, number okay. th- number three, Super Mario 3D World. Really? You know, was, three, was 3D World top three worthy? I think so, but I may have like Stockholm syndrome because Ray and I played <laughs> like twenty eight straight hours of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm. hey Ray, what do you think of Mario 3D World? <laughs> Fun. Uh, I, let's see, but then again, I think I'm in the same boat where it's just like I was forced to play it for so long that I have to like it. It's like a child. Uh, <laughs> it's like I've been with this for 18 years, now I'm forced to uh, enjoy its company. <laughs> um, <laughs> number two, Mario Kart 8. See, yeah. If, if that and Bayonetta switch spots, I'd be okay with this list. <laughs> no, um, Mario Kart 8's fantastic. It's the best Mario Kart. Uh, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I guess. It is. Absolutely. 
I am saying that, and then number one is correct, Mario Maker. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is how you fix this list. <laughs> you, this say fix this shit. All right. You. It's all wrong. God damn it. You you fucking like you swap Bayonetta and Mario Kart. You fucking swap Smash Bros and Mario, and mm. you put Wind Waker at seven and Splatoon at five. Say so this say fix this shit. This is <laughs> this is this is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> fucking what's 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 going on at IGN? What's going on here? How do they do? They say that they do this like in a podcast, or yeah, not in a podcast, but like the way they used to do it is like they do it in a podcast, and they just mm-hmm. like kind of talk it out and say, "Hey, here are right. the here are the best games for spring, uh, like currently on these systems. If you were to run out and buy a Wii U right now, here are the twenty five games you should get." Right. So, I mean. Okay. Other than Minecraft, I agree with their top ten. I just don't agree of the order it's in. <laughs> um, actually, no. Actually, no. I actually, yeah. Swap Minecraft out for Donkey Kong, and they fucking nailed that top ten. <laughs> they just don't have the order right. They fucked the order all up. Yeah, um, it's not. It's... I I do like Mario Maker at one. I think okay, that game is going to be so influential, like years down the road. I hope. Um. Uh, okay. All right. Well then. Uh, I think that's it for the week, ladies and gents. Unless you got uh, unless we got something else we want to bring up. Hmm. No. No, we're good. I don't have I don't anything unless you guys got something. There was, you know, the the drama about Quantum Break, but that got. I think that got settled real quick. Just people complaining about people being able to play other games. When people who play PC can play this game. Well, now I'm not happy with my Xbox One purchase, or I don't know. Oh, people yeah. Are dumb. Those. So the short version of this is people like bought an Xbox One for Quantum Break, and then Microsoft announced last week, hey, it's game ported to PC also. And then a bunch of people were like, wah, wah. I don't want PC gamers to have this because I bought an Xbox One for it. Yeah. Really? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the internet. I'll cry about anything. Mm. So. Whatever. Right, well, that, that happened. All right. Well, uh, that'll be it. We'll be back uh, next week. This has been Ray Ray Glenn Johansson the third. Bye, everybody. Aaron Reynolds. Play Devil Daggers. God damn it. And me, Bronson Fiore, and we'll see y'all next week. See ya.